Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and this is my second video in a series very briefly encapsulating Njals Saga. Now, when we left off, Gunnar had been entrusted by his cousin Un to recover the property that was rightfully hers after her divorce from Krut. She failed to get this property because during the lawsuit in which her father, Morth Gigia, or Morth Fiddle, uh, brought a case against Hrut for this property, Hrut challenged Morth Fiddle to a duel. Morth Fiddle wouldn't fight the duel, and so Hrut won his case because uh, there is a sort of appeals court of dueling in this legal system. Well, Un wants that property back nonetheless. Gunnar, her cousin, agrees to go and secure it for her. But to do so, he talks first to his good friend and advisor, Njol, an old man who always has wise plans and who is very good at seeing the future, sometimes in ludicrously specific detail. Now, Njol prescribes Gunnar a plan that goes something like this. He says, Gunnar, you need to to disguise yourself. You, you wear these nice clothes, but you need to wear a peddler's poor quality clothing and go around calling yourself Peddler Heaven. As Peddler Heaven, you need to travel with some companions who will build up your reputation as a shifty individual who cannot be trusted to ever hold up his end of a deal. And you need to fulfill this reputation. You need to try to sell people crappy quality materials, not tell them what's wrong with the stuff you're selling them, and then crawfish on the deal as soon as they point out what the bad features of your merchandise are. And then you need to go to Hroot. Stay with him for a while, stay in character as Peddler Heaven, and let him ask you about all the different districts of Iceland and the people you've met there as you've traveled around selling your crappy merchandise. Once he gets to the district where Morth Fiddle used to live, and he says, what do you think about the people there? You need to say, I don't think there's anyone of any quality there since Morth Fiddle died. He'll laugh and think this is good sport, and he'll say, well, what do you think about the case that I had against him? And you need to insult him and say that you think that he, you know, didn't have a good legal case, so you, so, so he brought a, a, a duel against Morth Fiddle. He will then uh, laugh and think this is a good, a good bit of fun. And you need to say, you know, not that I have any connection to this case, but if I did, and if I wanted to bring a legal case against you for the property that you owe Un after your divorce, what legal formula would I use to do that? He'll teach you the legal formula word by word, and then you need to repeat it and do a bad job of repeating it so that he thinks you haven't learned it. Then ask him to teach it to you again, and a second time you need to say it very well, and then say, I, Gunnar Holman, or son of Flitharindi, summon you, Hrut, to the all thing to face prosecution for the property of Un that you owe her after your divorce. Well, uh, to make a long story short, this exact thing happens. Uh, it goes exactly as Neil predicts, right down to the exact words Root is going to ask Gunnar. As I said, he can sometimes be ludicrously specific in what he can predict. And they end up going to court, and there, Gunnar pulls the same trick that Root pulled on Morth Fiddle. As he starts to lose the legal case, he says, well, fight a duel against me for this property. Root won't do it, and so Gunnar wins the case. And this helps secure his reputation as one of Iceland's great men. All right, well, Gunnar is shortly to go abroad himself, uh, as Hrut has done before him. This is a fairly standard motif in the lives of Icelandic uh, young men on a heroic path of greatness. And uh, he goes abroad with his brother Kolskeg. They prove themselves against many different Vikings. They have some exciting fights. There's a cool one where Kolskeg throws an anchor onto uh, an attacking uh, party's boat and breaks that boat. In that same fight, uh, we get a cool line where Kolskeg turns to Gunnar and says, and you often have to imagine this being kind of an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice uh, because of the nature of the humor. Uh, you have been much kinder to other men than to yourself today, for you have allowed them to rest, and you have not taken a rest, Gunnar. And Gunnar <laughs> takes a brief moment to rest while drinking a sizable quantity of mead from a keg they have on board and then going back to fighting. Anyway, in one of these fights, he acquires a great weapon, an atger. This is often translated halberd in English. This is a combination stabbing spear and cutting axe blade. And this will be his signature weapon for the rest of the saga. When he comes back to Iceland, 
after some time abroad, having actually been offered marriage uh, with members of the Danish and Norwegian royal houses, I am probably enough. Uh, he comes back as a very wealthy, very accomplished man, sharp dressed to the nines, and when he shows up at the All Thing after coming back, everybody notices this sharp dressed man uh, with so many achievements to his name now. And he happens to notice Hallgareth. Hallgareth, of course, is single now after her two failed marriages, uh, marriages that ended in the murder of her previous husbands. And Gunnar notices this beautiful woman, approaches her, and asks if it can be true that she's single. He sees that her hair is flowing freely as a single woman's would, not bound up or covered with something. And she says yes. And uh, he says, is it because no one is good enough for you? And she says, well, I think it's because no one will take the risk. And he says, well, you know, what if I will? And they seem to like each other, and he soon goes to her father, Holskul. Notably, of course, the brother of Hrut, uh, a man he's recently backed down in court. And although Holskul and Hrut advise him against it because of, of Hallgareth's personality, Gunnar finds himself married to Hallgareth. At their wedding, Gunnar's uncle Throwen is glaring at, staring at, um, this 14-year-old daughter of Hallgareth and her second husband, Gloom, this daughter named Thorgareth. And uh, Throwen's wife insults him for staring at this 14-year-old girl, inspiring Throwen to stand up, name witnesses, divorce his wife, and then immediately propose to Hulskull that he will marry his granddaughter, Thorgareth. So Throwen is married to Thorgareth at the same wedding as Gunnar is married to Hallgareth. Well, not too long after they're married, they're at a feast at the home of Njal and his wife, Bergthora. Now, Njal and Bergthora have three sons, Skarpetin, Grim, and Helgi. And Helgi is married to a woman named Thorhalla, who is from a very high-status family, and who, as apparently part of their prenup agreement, must always be seated most prominently of any woman at the table. So... When Helgi and Thorhalla arrive at the feast, Beric Thora asks Halgir to stand up from the high status seat she's in. She's close to the center of the table, uh, close to the end of the table uh, that's, that's most highly placed, and let Thorhalla sit there. Halgir refuses, saying that she won't step aside like some cast off hag. And this starts. A, a, a war of, of words between Hallgareth and Beric Thor that gets pretty ugly. Hallgareth does eventually concede the seat, but when Beric Thor brings around a basin for washing hands and faces, Hallgareth looks at Beric Thor's fingernails and comments on how ugly they are and on how beardless Beric Thor's husband Njal is. This is considered a great flaw in his appearance, of course. Well, Beric Thor says, I don't think that your husband Thorvald was beardless, and yet your foster father Thorvald had him killed on your orders or wishes. This insults Hogarth, returns to her husband Gunnar, and says, What's the use of being married to the manliest man in Iceland if you won't defend me against this kind of slander? Gunnar's not going to get drawn into it. He decides to leave with his wife, but before he does, Beric Thor and Hogarth promise each other that they have not seen the end of this particular feud. In video 3 about Njal's saga, I will look at the feud that erupts between Hallgareth and Beric Thora because it is much more than words, and the fantastic disaster in Gunnar's life that this sets off. For now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.